Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we read Ezra chapter 9 and we're going to jump right in. So in this chapter, I cannot help but go back to Exodus and think about um, the people getting to go to the promised land and they're told not to intermingle and, and to be friends with these people. I mean, it is the same story. A, a lot of people call this the second exodus and, and then returning to their land. But what is kind of heartbreaking in this chapter is that we see the same sin. We see them being enticed by the people that live there, the people who worship other gods, the people who um, live like pagans and don't live the way God has told them to live. And they have relationships with them. They become friends. They like doing life with those people. And then they start marrying them and becoming family with them. And it it breaks God's heart. In my Bible, it, he told them exactly not to do that in Deuteronomy. And, and I haven't noted exactly where that is, but it's not in my brain. But um, it's like they are drawn to the same sin over and over and over again. Just this, the, the common, the same sin struggle, even generations later, later on in their people. But what really catches my eye in this chapter is the way that Ezra mourns their sin. And he's so upset by it. And he goes directly to God and he takes it to God and he says, Hey, I know this is wrong, God. I'm praying on, on their behalf. Please forgive them. We know this. Help them to repent. Help us to live in the way that you want us to. And it was just a good example and a good reminder to me. Like, do I mourn my sin in that way? Do I, as soon as, as, soon as I sin, does it bother me so much that I have to go directly to God um, instead of letting it fester in my heart and harden my heart and make me turn from God. But even another level of that, I love how Ezra is so upset and um, worried about the sin of the people he loves and cares about so much so that he goes to God and he intercedes. He prays for them on their behalf, asking for God's forgiveness, asking for God to draw them and to convict them and to change them and, uh, repair their broken relationship because of sin. Another thing that I can't help but think is, are there people in my life that cause me to sin, that maybe live a lifestyle of sin that um, I'm doing life with, that instead of I'm pulling them up, they're dragging me down. Just something to think about as I look at the Israelites, how they're drawn to people like that. Yeah. So all throughout this book, the one way that Ezra has always been described is he is Ezra the scribe. But I want you to reread this and to see that maybe Ezra is not just Ezra the scribe. Maybe Ezra is Ezra the prayer warrior. And he wouldn't have said it that way. By the way, most prayer warriors, I know they, they don't consider themselves prayer warriors. I think that's kind of one of the prerequisites. And anybody tells you, oh, I'm a, I'm a prayer warrior. Um, then, Red flag. Eh, yeah. Um, and so, I'm the most humblest. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, same thing, right? So imagine, but like imagine the punch to the gut that this was. Chapter 8 ended with a wonderful, I'm talking about huge worship service. And then the next item on the agenda is how the people have not separated themselves from the other nations around them. The same thing that originally sent them into exile could send them back if they don't repent right here. Now you gotta, I just, I wanna address this real quick. Like, why is God always so upset that these people are marrying in with these other tribes? Uh, this is important because intermarriages at this early stage of Israelite society, they were condemned because those other nations worshiped other gods. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think this is a problem, go back and reread Solomon's story where mm -hmm. Solomon married women who also served other gods. Led his and so astray. even Solomon, the, this gifted leader, uh, he was led astray. Here's what the Lord always knew is that idol worship was always going to be the, the easy besetting sin of his people. They would always struggle with it. And that there's no relationship more influential in our lives than the people we marry. Okay? Look, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, uh, I <laughs> mean, right. mom and dads, yes, major influences. But this, this, this idea of, of, of who, can, who can most influence us is who we marry. 
And, uh, and so the problem wasn't the race of the other people. It's the religion of these other people that would threaten the faith that God's people are supposed to be gifted over to. And so what, what Ezra does is he lays down and he begins to pray for his people. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you what I like most about this. My biggest takeaway from this. Far too often, when I look at the world, I am tempted to look at the world and go, this place is a pigsty. It is terrible. Lord, when are you going to come do something about all this wickedness and these evil people in all the world? All the bad people, all, not me. All the bad, yeah, not me, Lord. <laughs> not, no, it's, it's them that's the problem. And really, that's the problem is when you start looking at evil and wicked and sin in the world and you, and you start blaming other people instead of praying. Mm. So Ezra is not at this point like condemning the other nations of the world. He said, if we got a problem, our problem has to be first dealt with at home. And how we deal with it is by confession and repentance. And so he's coming at this with... If there is sin in the world, then why should I expect sinners to repent before I expect God's own people to first mm -hmm. repent? If we're not going to first repent, why would, why would people who don't even know him start to repent? And so he starts at the root of the problem, which is God's own people. So uh, not only is this a, a story of sin, but this is also a story of repentance. These people repent, and they're not sent back into exile. They're allowed to stay. I just like that. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to finish up in chapter number 10, and, uh, and we'll see what Ezra has to do and how he deals with all these people. All right, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.